Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video we'll be creating a Twitter bot that logs in by itself and then posts a tweet. For this tutorial we'll be using Python, so make sure that you already have Python installed, as well as the Selenium WebDriver module. I'll also be using Visual Studio Code as my code editor. I'll link all of the links that you'll need in this video in the description, as well as provide a link to the code that we create in this video as well. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is download a web driver for the browser that you'll be using. For this tutorial we'll be using Chrome, so on this website, make sure to get the correct Chrome driver version for the version of Chrome that you're using. To find out what version of Chrome you're using, you just need to click the three dots up here, then go to Help, and then about Google Chrome. We can see here that I'm using Chrome version 85, so we'll be downloading this Chrome driver right here. After downloading Chrome driver, you wanna make sure it's in the same folder that your Python file is going to be in. So with that said, let's just create the folder on my desktop here. Call it anything you want, like Twitter bot project. After dragging in the web driver, I'll be opening Visual Studio Code and I'll drag in the folder that we just created. After that, I'll, I'll be creating a new file inside of the folder we just dragged in, and this is going to be the actual Python script, so I'll be calling mine twitterbot.py. Also make sure to have the .py at the end, otherwise it won't be a Python file. Alright, one more thing before we can start coding, we need to open up the terminal or command prompt and pip install selenium. So since I'm on Windows, I'll open command prompt in the search bar over here by typing cmd. After that, you just want to type pip install selenium and then press enter. After that's done installing, we can finally go back to Visual Studio Code. And then there's only one more thing we need to do before we start coding. We need to create a text file with the email and password of the Twitter account that we'll be using. So make sure to create a Twitter account and store the email and password in here. Make sure to call this file account underscore info dot txt. Also make sure that inside of the file, type the email first and then the password. After that's done, we can start typing our code. The first thing we need to do is import all the modules. So from Selenium, import webdriver is the first. Then we need to import keys from selenium.webdriver.com and Keys. Then we need to import options from selenium.webdriver.chrome.options. The last one that we'll be needing is time, so just import time. After that, we'll be creating a function called account underscore info, and this function is going to read the text file where we stored the email and password. It will then store the email and password in two different variables. And then the function will return the email and password. After creating this function, we'll be executing it, and then we store the email and password in these new variables. When that's done, we can create another variable called tweet and store a string inside of that variable. This will be the tweet that we'll be posting. After that, you have the option to choose whether or not you want to start Chrome in full screen or not. So since I want to start in full screen, I'll be creating an options object and then giving it an argument. This argument will be a string called start-maximized. After that, we want to create our driver and apply the options that we just set to that driver. If you don't want to start Chrome on full screen, then you can comment out these three lines of code here, as well as delete this argument that says options equals options. When that's done, we can finally open Chrome on Twitter's login page by typing driver.get and then passing a string of the login link as the argument. Alright, so before actually running your code, please just make sure you have a comma here. I'm sorry, that was my mistake. I forgot to add one earlier. Um, so before running your code, just make sure you have a comma right here. I hope you enjoy the rest of the tutorial though. We can now actually run our code and it should open Chrome on Twitter's login page. Here comes the interesting part though. To continue from here, we need to specify a bunch of xpaths. What I mean by that is we need to figure out exactly what the bot needs to do on this page. And what we want the bot to do is type in the email here and the password here and then press the login button. To do this, we need to copy and paste the xpath of each of these three elements and paste them into three different variables inside of our code. So to do this, we right click on our email element here, click inspect, right click it again and then click inspect again. After this, we need to right click the highlighted part of the HTML code and then go to copy, copy xpath. 
After this we need to go back to our python script and make sure not to end the script, otherwise you'll have to run it every time you want to get another element. So right underneath here we'll create another variable called email underscore xpath and create a string with single quotes and inside of the string we'll paste the xpath of the email element on the twitter login page. Then we'll create two more variables, each with single quotes as well, and then we'll do the exact same thing for them as we did for the email xpath. So make sure to store the password xpath in this one and the login button xpath in this one. Alright, so after storing all of the xpaths as strings into three different variables, we can now stop running the script. Then you'll want to type time.sleep and as an argument pass something like 1 or 2. This will be the delay before Python actually starts interacting with any of the elements on Twitter's login page. The reason we're adding this is because the web page sometimes takes a while to load, and Python ends up searching for elements too early on the screen, when there are no elements to search yet, so Python gives you an error. After this we can type element by xpath and pass in the email xpath variable as an argument. Then you want to type dot send keys and pass in the email variable we created earlier as an argument. What this will do is it will find the email HTML element on this page by searching for its xpath and after it's found, Chrome driver will type in the keys that we specify here, which we passed in our email variable as an argument. Now you can copy and paste this two more times and just make sure to add another time.sleep with about half a second in between each of these tasks like this. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but I do it just in case anyway. Now we just want to change this one to password underscore xpath and change this to password. This will do the exact same thing we did here, but instead of the email, we'll be typing in the password. And for this one, we want to change this login underscore xpath. But the thing is, we don't want to send keys to a button. We don't want to type anything in, because that doesn't make much sense. So here, instead of typing in keys, we want to click the button. And to do this, we change send keys to click. And that's the only difference between sending keys and clicking certain things. All this will do is click our login button after the bot has typed in the email and password, exactly how you would if you were logging in manually unless you typed in the password first, but but I think you know what I mean. After this, we can run the script again, and we should see the bot open Chrome on Twitter's login page. And we should also see the bot type in all of the needed information, as well as clicking the login button. And there we go, the bot logs in, but now we need to post a tweet. To do this, we just repeat earlier steps, except we need to store the xpath of this tweet button. We also need to store the xpath of this message input and we also need to store the xpath of this tweet button over here. Make sure to do it in the same way that we did the previous ones, maybe create the variables beforehand, and make sure to make all of them single quote string variables. Also make sure to not end the script before each xpath was stored in their appropriate variable. So let's store them real quick. After they've been stored, we can stop running the script now and make sure to add another time.sleep. But this time it has to be at least longer than 3 seconds, depending on how fast your Wi-Fi or internet is. Because we're loading a new web page and we need to make sure that the delay we create here is a long enough delay for the web page to load. Alright, after this, we can just copy and paste the code from up here and change everything we need to change. This will click the tweet button, this will type in the tweet, and this will post the tweet. Also make sure to add small delays in between each of these, like this. Alright, I think that should be all, so now we can run the script again and see if everything works. Okay, cool, so everything works, and um, if you have any questions, please join my Discord server with the link in the description so that we can help you there. If your question is simple, then you could also just ask in the comment section of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, please let me know if you have any ideas on future tutorial videos that you would like to see. Also, please let me know if you have any idea on how I could improve my tutorial videos, and uh, yeah, with that said, thanks again guys, I hope you enjoyed.